Oh. Yes. <laughs> I forgot the 30 second start. <laughs> It's Monday. It's going to pop up on its own. Hey, y'all. <laughs> Not how I intended to begin. <laughs> All right. Hey, y'all. <laughs> welcome. Welcome to Playing with Possibilities. I am joined by my friends and colleagues, Ade and Christine. And we talk about everything from spirituality, social justice, being human, and connecting with our ancestors, how the things that we do every day create our reality and how we can intentionally create our collective reality together. My name is Cecile Armstrong. I use she, her, her pronouns, she, her, hers pronouns. I'm a black woman and a self-care and social justice facilitator. I am streaming to you live today from the ancestral lands of the Tutelo, colonized as Roanoke, Virginia. I'm the founder of Inspounded inspired by Indigo, um, an online membership community where I guide folks to let go of blame, shame, and guilt so we can make anti-racism a habit. Uh, every month we go through my four pillars together for support to create this habit of undoing what we've lived and learned about race, privilege, and equality. And those steps are self-care, know your facts, undo the work, and rest and celebrate. And if you want to find out more, you can check out the link in the description. And now I will turn it over to my friends, whoever wants to go first. Go ahead, Christine, because I am not going behind that introduction. I feel all nervous. Right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's a gift or not, my friend, but thank you. Um, hey, y'all, I'm, hey, I'm Christine Gautreau. I use she, her, her pronouns. I am Zooming in today from the ancestral land of the Cherokee. I am near Lake Hartwell, South Carolina, um, because I've been wandering in the mountains as I make my way home, or other people may call it lost, but um, I'm here and present. And um, what do I do? I'm a white woman. I'm a white social justice advocate, advocate who um, self and community care are the through lines of my work. Um, I really believe that we must take care of ourselves in order to take care of our communities and to do this work, or as Cecile likes to say, undo the work. But, um, you know, we have to take time for ourselves and before we pour out. So I am, that's what I was doing this weekend. And um, also had a super fun event with my co-author, Sheila K. Collins in Asheville. And uh, yeah, it's, I'm, Delighted that the world is opening back up a little and we can do some things in person again. So I am grateful to be here this morning. Happy Monday, y'all. Happy Monday. <laughs> Happy Monday. Ooh, Lord, it's good to have some good friends. You know that thing they say about money? That if the five people that are close to you, you add up how much they're making and divide it by five or whatever tells you how much you are worth, something like that in money. I haven't heard that before. <laughs> well, you kind of heard a paraphrase of it. So I know that I'm among friends who are calling me up and hi, because I was like, oh, I should have gone after Cicero. I should have waited. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am Ade Adifawashe. Um, I am a transformational agent, mindset coach, intuitive healer. You know, my work has evolved over the over the years, but it's not really it's like I just it's not even an evol I guess it is an evolution, but more so um I've been brought into the aware awareness that my work is the ancestral work. And um I see the shift that it's making with me the more I surrender to it. I've been mm -hmm. doing it somewhat in the past, but now I've just surrendered completely to it. And everything I've done is all about that. My main program is called Representing Our Ancestors, Representing Our Stories. Because whether you know it or not, you're representing your ancestors. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you're adopted, don't know your family, you have ancestors. We all do. We're part of the great tree of life. And when we represent our ancestors, that's a conscious awareness way of moving through life. Then you represent your story. Um, it, it, it's fun. I love doing it. I, I receive so much from doing it. And I also want to share that I am in the United Kingdom, the land of the original colonizers, and I'm here to help them represent their ancestors so they can do things differently. So, you know, my work is cut out for me. Yeah, your work <laughs> is. <laughs> okay, so um, before we get to our topic today, I would love for us to take a breath. Are y'all ready mm. to do that with me? 
Let's breathe. Let's yes, breathe. Please. Let's breathe. breathe. Okay. So if you're live, please breathe with us. If you're watching on the replay, please go ahead and breathe with us. So as always, I'm asking you to sit up straight, head over your shoulders, shoulders over your hips so that your belly has room to expand. Relax your tummy. Notice where your shoulders are and let them drop down. Notice where in your body you might be holding tension and just let it go. And as you take a deep inhale today, I want you to raise your arms and just stretch, stretch your whole body. Just inhale deeply and stretch. And then on the exhale, just relax. And then one more time, sit up straight, loosen your muscles, take a deep inhale and feel your belly expand, stretch your arms out. Oh, and then on the inhale, exhale, sorry, exhale, let your body fall back into its natural position. And then when you feel settled back in your body, go ahead and open your eyes. I don't know about y'all, but I needed that. <laughs> so today, today we have a juicy topic. We are going to be talking about divine timing, about trusting the universe um, to deliver what you need when you need it, about um, receiving with ease instead of trying to push and force things to happen. So that's that's what we're talking about today. And I love this topic because this is something that I struggle with. I, w- I will be the first to say that I try to make things happen all the time. And then I hear, you know, trust divine timing and I, I'll sit back and say, okay, I trust and I will be in the flow. And then next thing I know, I see something or feel some type of way, or I should have had this by now. I should have done this by now. And I'm right back to trying to make it happen. So that's what we're talking about today. How how are you guys? Do you guys stay in the flow? Do you trust all the time? I would not. So here's what I'll say. That's a good question. You said, do we trust all the time? I think generally, I believe I trust all the time, but doesn't mean I do all that I trust all the time. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm at a place in my life where I really know that there is a natural order to things. Mm-hmm. But somehow I'm like, yeah, there's a natural order, but this needs to get done <laughs> right now. <laughs> so when I put my butt in the way, natural order is like, okay. Right. Uh, yeah, your butt ain't big enough, but okay. And then I'll come back like, you're right. My butt ain't big enough. Okay. Um, it's something that I struggle. Well, I would say struggle. I have struggled with it Mm -hmm. because sometimes I even went into where I kind of like in my mind thinking of how I dial it back and go with the universal order of things. And then after a while, I'm like, but I didn't get that done. How should I I start to speed up? Like Mm -hmm. this sort of relationship, um, antagonistic relationship with divine order. Mm -hmm. And the more I question myself, it's like, if you if you really trust the divine, if you really trust life, why are you stressing yourself out? Great, great. Why? And so what I'm recognizing, there's an undoing that's happening for me. Mm-hmm. And this last few months has been like that. There's so many things. You look at my to-do list, it's just like, mm-hmm. like and now mm-hmm. I can actually say, because normally when I write it, I say, oh yeah, Whew, I got a lot, a lot to do today. Now I can look at my list and say, I probably won't begin to all of that. And allowing myself to really trust the natural order because not everything that I think needs to be done that or anything that not everything that I think I want to do mm-hmm. needs to be done. Right. Um, right. You know, as I align with that and kind of pull myself back, breathing, sometimes taking a nap, meditating, it allows me to trust more. And I recognize it. Oh, we lost Christine. Oh, we lost Christine. <laughs> I'm recognizing that the challenge that I've had, and I think most of us can relate to it, is there's this control. Yes. Like, yes, but. Yeah. Yes, but control. Mm-hmm. We live in a world where our mind has been colonized. So part of it's undoing the mind. Mm-hmm. 
Like but we doing, doing, about, doing, doing is not the answer. Go yeah, ahead. we talked about this last Thursday because you know last Thursday I was having a day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a, a day. <laughs> wasn't going to do that. I was not because you know me. <laughs> okay. But last Thursday I was having a day. I had a list of things that I wanted to get done. You know, and the first couple things I was able to do had a meeting, had some other things. And and then I um, left to go run an errand and that errand turned from like a 10 minute thing into a several hour thing and really threw me, you know, off. And by the time I finally got back home, I was just like, oh, my God, I've got so much to do. And I was kind of freaking out, you know, because I told both of y'all about it that day. Um, But but when I went back and looked at what I had to do. I realized that I had put all those deadlines on myself. You know, there was nothing I owed to anybody else. And there was nothing that was going to happen if I didn't get it all done. And then I decided, okay, all of these things I'm going to push off for another day. And I'm really going to do the things I need to do to care for myself today. And the funny thing was I knew the next day I was going to be gone all day. I was at a conference all day on Friday. It was fabulous. But I knew I wasn't going to be doing any work for my, my own business. But by Sunday night, just about everything on my list was done and it was done with ease, you know, and if I had kept pushing on Thursday, I would not have been happy. (laughs) But, you know, I finally looked at my list and was like, I don't have to do it all right now. You know, I'm putting this burden on myself. Let me let it go. I love that, Cecile. (laughs) Yeah, we can do it. (laughs) I was like, what? Can I hear? Um, I love that in regards to like a lot that we put the deadlines on ourselves. That often when we're not trusting on divine timing, it is because we have put all these expectations or deadlines on ourselves. Mm-hmm. And also, like our story for this morning really resonates, right? Cecile and I are in a mastermind that has been going for about five years. It's a Monday manifesting mastermind that we do faithfully at Mm -hmm. 10 30 a.m in the morning and it is very rare that we don't meet and this morning i was wandering in the mountains and trying to find a signal and uh cecile and i had made arrangements ahead of time to have her run back because i knew i was going to be driving home but literally everybody called out from this morning's meeting like when does that happen like when does it and i was like right it just doesn't happen and, and it was like the universe just opening this up going it's okay to wonder it's okay to take your time this morning so mm-hmm. yeah Brigitte is saying i find myself slashing my to-do list more and more mm-hmm. and streamlining what i tell myself i need to do mm-hmm. oh yeah yes. yep yes that mm-hmm. is that is it i think it, but this whole thing for me is recognizing that some of the things I need to do is because I'm attaching. If I do it, then I'll achieve this result. Now, right. other people in different situations, and we all have to find what works for us, but mm-hmm. we must really be intentional about what am I trying to achieve? Mm-hmm. You know, that, that I my website needs updating. There's so many things that need updating. In the past, I'll be freaking out. I mean, I still have moments like, oh, but just recognizing that, okay, even though my website is not updated, it's not the way I want it to be it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Because the bottom line I'm finding is being able to come back to a place of love and acceptance of self, no matter if I do my everything on my to-do list or not. If I'm measuring my worth based on how much I got done, you know? That's a thing. (laughs) That's a thing, especially for solo and entrepreneurs. Like especially for solo and entrepreneurs, that's a thing, y'all. Because Mm -hmm. often we are our brands. Often mm-hmm. we are the ones that show up to do the teaching and stuff like that. And, and I think that is tricky and I'm mm-hmm. glad you named it. Like, and, well, and also it is that, it is that practical piece of if it doesn't get done, who's doing it right. That we right. can release it a little bit, but we can't, we can set it down and rest, but we can't forget to pick it back up again. Mm-hmm. And that's the piece for the solopreneurs, but the, the the basing your worth on how much you do, that's across the board. Because I felt that way even when I was working for other people. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. I agree. Especially, especially yeah. in the nonprofit world. 
Yes, yes. We live in a society where it's like you got to do, 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 productivity, productivity. You got to show that you're committed to what you're doing. But mm -hmm. you talk about how did you get some arrest? Arrest? What are you talking about? We got things to do. There are people waiting. There are things that I've rushed to do only to send the email to be told, oh, be due to COVID, we don't have a lot of people here. So we won't be able to get to it until two, three, four weeks. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? But you know, there are things that I wrote down on my to-do list months ago that I haven't done. Mm -hmm. And life is still spinning. Life is still doing what life, the earth is spinning. Mm -hmm. I'm here and I'm gonna pick it up. Sometimes I'm actually totally, well, I don't know if it's totally, but maybe, maybe when the truth comes, my mind gets in the way. It's like, well, it's not totally, maybe it is. But I've actually just allowed myself, I do my list and pay attention to receive guidance on what to do. And mm -hmm. there's some things that I've been wanting to do for a while that I've forgotten. It would just rise up. And I'm like, oh, yes. yeah, i got to do that. And I do it and I knock it out and it's done. Mm -hmm. Some things you do have to wait for the right time. You'll be, you, yes. you think you need to do it right now. I've had this where I've had things on my list where I'm like, I got to do this. I got to do this. And for some reason, it just keeps getting pushed back or blocked or I try to do it. It doesn't work. And then months later, it happens easily. And it was like, oh, that wasn't the right time. You know, if I had done that earlier, then I wouldn't have had the same result or I wouldn't have connected yeah. with this person or, you know, something else would have been different. And it was like, ah, stop forcing it and let it happen when it's supposed to because the universe knows. They know more than we do. I also, they're guiding you, right? I also have a curiosity about the natural rhythms piece, right? Mm -hmm. From some new stuff I'm learning and the different cycles about how we're in tune with our natural rhythms of our mm -hmm. own body wisdom and then that of the the natural world. Like I'm, I have a curiosity around that for mm -hmm. folks that track. Like, what are your power days? What are when are your cycles of productivity? Because I think in some part, that's a piece of this, right? It is mm -hmm. divine timing, but it's also that inner authority of knowing when when works for you, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm an early morning person. I like to get yeah. up and do some beautiful <laughs> work or writing in the morning, right? I mean, we're different, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't ask me to do something after 10 o'clock at night. I don't even know my name. Like, I'm going to say, after right? 8 o'clock, I start talking gibberish. <laughs> right? It's right. And it's so I think that's part of that of divine timing. I think I think that feeds into that about knowing our body wisdom and knowing who we are and know what works. And also that feeling you get, we've all had it on this call because I know we've had this conversation. You know you're in divine timing in the flow by the way it feels in your body. Yes. Like there is a there is this I want to say sweetness that just like you're like, oh, there it is. There mm -hmm. you go. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. true. I mean, because even in that moment, it may seem like a lot, but things are just kind of click. It's like, oh, look. I mean, I was looking for something today and I've looked everywhere. And today I said, OK, spirit, ancestors, tell me where it is. I found another book. It's like, ah, that's not it. And suddenly I saw this little notebook. It's like, oh, there it is. And it reminds me that I can always call for help. And the mm -hmm. thing is, as well is this, you know, what is this mindset, I find in order to lean into it, to embrace it, it is important to trust life. And when I say trust life, it's recognizing that life is not a problem to solve. Mm -hmm. It's not a problem. And the relationship we'll have with life will determine how we show up in life. So for me, mm -hmm. if I, when I'm out there in nature and looking at the colors of the flowers, the trees, and when I look down at the ground, I don't see red. I don't see purple, I don't see white, but somehow those beautiful colors are coming up. For me, that's a reminder, it's like, I may not see what I'm trying to accomplish, but mm -hmm. you just keep doing what you're doing because what you want to do will reveal itself because it's already in you, you're a part mm -hmm. of it. Like a seed, it's just like, it's just a seed. But then when that seed blossoms, when it becomes more, it's like, that is so beautiful. But it does require that we trust life to come back to our breath. Mm -hmm. So that way we can know our own rhythm. We can know the rhythm that to understand that our rhythm is part of the divine rhythm. And 
it, it, it requires a sort of slowing down, which is scary for some of us. It's like, ooh, I don't know. What if I slow down things don't get done? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't be looking my direction. <laughs> 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 well, I remember hearing something when I was in America, and at first I was like, what does that mean? Well, actually, they told the story. And there's bottom line is they say the hit dog holler. That the dog, when you have a pack of dogs, and they're all gathering, and the one that you hit with the big one, it'll make a sound. I wasn't looking in your direction. I'm just saying that you can slow down, and the work we get done. You, universal you. Not you, Christine, but you're part of the universal you. Okay. Okay. Oh, good. Good. Well, I, I would say that I know from experience that pushing without taking a break is less effective for me than pausing. I remember um, when I was working, working for an organization and um, I was encouraged, pushed, believed to not take my lunch. And... Mm -hmm. My my productivity and my effectiveness like went way down until I decided, what am I doing? I feel bad. I'm not getting as much work done. You know, I'm basically sitting here so that see that I'm sitting at my desk. And I started by taking my break and I was so much more productive and I felt better. Now they had anxiety because they didn't see me for an hour because I left my desk, but they were getting more work out of me, <laughs> you know, and it felt better. So, mm -hmm. you know, it was a trade off. Yeah. They had to deal with the anxiety, not me. <laughs> Go ahead, Kristen. I do. It looks like you're about to say something. Let's say I'm downloading something. So I I <laughs> okay. Well, I was just thinking about how I started my morning, right? I made the conscious choice to, I was in this gorgeous space in North Carolina, and I made the choice to go on this mile and a half hike to start my week with a visit to a waterfall. And I think about the flow of water. Yes. And it was, well, when Cecile was here recently and visited me, we went to one of the largest, the tallest waterfalls in Georgia, which is Amakalola Falls. And when you're at the top of that fall, it is this small meandering creek that is just really gentle and wow. small. And then it goes over this cliff and makes this like, crazy big impact and I just think about the lessons of that and the mm -hmm. fact that that water just goes with the flow like it it is just doing its thing and going with the flow and it's not pushing it's actually flowing and how magical that is and what a lesson it is for me for sure mm -hmm. and um and also for that just little bit of water at the top of the stream to make such a big waterfall because when we got to the top and i saw how small you know how how narrow and how small that little creek was and that it turned into that big waterfall i don't know if you remember my mouth was like hanging open i was like that's where this is coming from this little bit of water <laughs> that is so perfect because that's the thought i was having because oftentimes it's so always easy when we need to correct. We think we have to make this big change, this big shift, which is another way of the mind, the ego mind trying to get us not to shift. Like, well, I don't have time to change that. I'm too busy. I'm too this. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I can't even take a break. I, but sometimes all it takes is could be just 10 seconds of saying, I'm going to stop. Mm -hmm. 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. And then maybe... Tomorrow or next week, you can do 15 seconds of just taking your hands off the computer. And then or, by the time you get to 13 or, seconds, you're like, oh my God, oh my God. Now just wait two more seconds to go. Right. Go ahead, Cecil. Relax your belly and just take a breath. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, 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 I believe that we're under this illusion, as human beings, that we think we're doing this mighty thing. But the force is coming from an invisible place and it's just it's gentle because yeah. if life happens as fast as we want life to happen we won't be able to keep up we you know even the breath <laughs> right <laughs> exactly because we're trying to think we're the one doing it it's just mm -hmm. trust in the intelligence of life i don't care if you call it divine god jesus but i don't i don't really care if you believe in all that but there we can at least trust life 
Mm -hmm. that life is for you never ever against you and is a practice it is a mindset to say okay i'm going to take a breath okay i'm going to stop okay i'm going to turn the tv uh, radio off on the way to work i'm not going to listen to my favorite podcast today i'm going to listen to my own inner cast i'm going to listen to what i need to know for myself what mm -hmm. i've learned from all these things that i've been gathering the book that i've been reading the shows that i've been listening to what wants to come up for me today and when we make space for that we find ourselves in alignment doing what we need to do. Mm -hmm. I think when we pay attention to that note, Attic, is like right when you were talking, there was this teeny tiny little green spider that was coming up my window. I'm sitting on the side of a road right now, y'all. Like, where did this little spider come from, right? But spider to me is always about um, co creating and weaving the life yes. that we want, right? Yes. And this teeny tiny spider just came and was like, hello. And it was teeny. And it yes. weaves big webs, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's that reminder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a reminder. The little, those beings teach us so much. I have mm -hmm. had a wasp in here about two weeks ago. And at first, I didn't even know what it was, but to cut a long story short, I kept thinking, what is that? And when I finally saw it, it was a day when I said I made some new declarations about the actions I'm going to take. Mm -hmm. And when I went to look it up, what it symbolized, it was courage, being productive, and really go a new beginning. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, confirmation. <laughs> a few days ago, I'm like, because windows are not open. I mean, of course, insect could come in through different places, but I can't think where it came from. A few days ago, I was in my bedroom and I can hear, bzzz. no, that's a fly. I don't like flies. I don't kill insects, but flies and roaches. I tell them, go, or you're dead. <laughs> but anyway, I digress. Anyway, long story short, it was another wasp. And I said, okay, there's a message here for me. And in that moment as well, I've, I've really just challenged myself to move forward. Actually, I... I received a download and I was supposed to do, um, I was led to do a video recording. And when I woke up, I was like, do I really want to go to nature now and meditate here? And then as I was deciding, like, I'm going to go, follow that guidance, mm -hmm. I saw the wasp. All that to say, you know, if we pay attention to the four leggings, the mm -hmm. wing beings, they, they bring us so much message. Life is constantly giving us messages. Slow down here. Do this, do that. Mm -hmm. But if we're just thinking it's about what I do, it's about what I do, it's about what I do, you're going to do yourself into a place where you don't like. And the body always tells us. The mm -hmm. body, our bodies let us know you've done too much, you're doing too much, slow down. Mm -hmm. I think you said it, Cicero, or maybe Christine, but it's like, well, no, when we're in alignment. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if you're feeling stressed, anxious, that's your body saying, slow down. Mm -hmm. Slow, take a breath, 10 seconds, five seconds, one second. That's good enough. Mm. Yeah. And the thing, the thing I want to say about the body knowing, your body does know, but we don't yes. always know what our body is saying, especially if we're out of practice listening to it. So it might mm -hmm. feel uncomfortable at first, but yes. if you keep paying attention and keep recognizing the signs, eventually you'll get comfortable with it. So just saying that the body knows, you know, if you haven't paid attention to your body, it might feel like it's telling you some weird stuff and you need to stop and just go back to where you're comfortable. But but that's not always the case. You know, your body knows, but you have to pay attention and recognize the signs and know what, you know, that twinge in your back means for you and know what that, you know, sign that headache is coming, what that means for you or what that upset stomach means for you, because it's not the same message for everybody. So you have to know your body for it to for the messages to get through, because it's going to give you the message regardless. You know, but you have to know. And, your and body. I think what you're that saying, way. sorry, what you're saying, I just yeah. want to throw this. I know Christine wants to say something, but it's also remembering when the signs come up, whether it's a headache, a backache, to not drop to, I'm getting old, because <laughs> then you miss the message. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, you're not getting old. You just need to listen. Mm -hmm. Oh, my back is hurting. I'm getting old. Oh, 35. Oh, I'm scared of 40. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm too old for this. Shut up. Shut up. Right? Anyway, I digress. Yeah, I was just going to add on there because all three of us are embodied coaches. And sometimes if it is not a practice that you're used to, it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to reach yes. out and have a support person or somebody who has been there who can guide you into it. Mm -hmm. um, because there are 
things that we can do and tips and techniques that we can do to help you get in your body and yeah. um and pay attention because and and like you said cecile if you're not used to it if you're like what are they talking about i don't i don't get it right mm -hmm. and um so i mean the first thing is just be gentle with yourself don't beat yeah. yourself mm -hmm. up if you're mm -hmm. not currently in your body because our culture and our world encourages us to not be in our bodies. It encourages mm -hmm. yes. us to be on our devices. It encourages mm -hmm. us to not pay attention. That whole mindset of pushing through and mm -hmm. doing it on um, the work schedule, right? Doing right. it on, um, we were just having this conversation uh, this weekend about the way our systems are set up and whose bodies are they set up for and um, mm -hmm. the way, you know, all that makes a difference in our productivity and our in the cycles of nature in our bodies. So, yeah, so be gentle with yourself if you're listening and you're like, I have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> Which is actually a great place to be when we say, I don't know what they're talking about. Clearly, you're engaged enough to want to understand as mm -hmm. opposed to that's a lot of rubbish. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> that there is no opening there. But when you say, I don't understand what they're talking about in the universe, life says, I got you. And, as, mm -hmm. and if you're on a practical level, there's three of us here. You can find us on social media. You can find us on our website. Mm -hmm. Choose. You know, th there's always an answer. There's an answer to mm -hmm. every and anything that we're going through. There's an answer. Where, just because I don't see doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I just need to be bold okay. enough to register enough to pass. Say that part again. Say that part again. <laughs> just because I don't see it, just because you just because you don't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And even if it doesn't exist, by the fact that you ask for the solution, somehow, some way is going to manifest itself. Someone's going to have a thought to respond. You can't ask life for something and life not produce. Mm -hmm. So the power to say, I don't see as opposed to it's never going to happen. Not true. But if you really stick with that, then it won't happen because you won't see it. But mm -hmm. just because you don't see it, you don't know it doesn't mean there isn't an answer. There's an answer. Mm -hmm. There's an answer. Well, and I, I think talking about divine timing, right? How we started at the top of this is if you're listening now and there's a question about it, like that may be your answer that, hey, right. you're listening right now about this. Because I've also been the believer that when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Mm -hmm. And that has happened in my own life with divine oh, right timing. And I mean, that's why I was in North Carolina this weekend for a program that way I was resisting. I'm like, oh, I'm not going to do that. And spirit was like, oh, yeah, you're doing that. And I'm like, what? What are you talking about? And it was very clear. Oh, yeah, this is what you're doing. And it's like, OK, this is mm -hmm. what I'm doing. And mm -hmm. so that timing and this is a program that people have been trying to get me to do for years that I was like, no, I don't. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. And then. It was very clear that it was the right time. And it was like, mm -hmm. all right. And that's that not pushing, right? On both sides, I will have to say. Because if we respect our own body wisdom, I think one of the things happens when we promote things or when we trusting as entrepreneurs, trusting as small business owners, that the right time for the people that are going to learn from us or take our programs or coach mm -hmm. with us, we have to trust that timing too. Yes. Like it is a very reciprocal thing and it can be hard yes. sometimes. Yes. It can be yes. hard. Yep. Yes. Trust yes. that the universe is going to put you in the path of the people who need to hear your message. Indeed. I always mm -hmm. say self employment is a spiritual practice. It is for me because mm -hmm. it's ultimate trust. Trusting that you, the clans are going to come. So you're going to get things they need to be taken care of, like the mm -hmm. bills, that you're going to have the money. And even if I don't have the money, that somehow I'm able to work it out. Though yeah. sometimes I'm like, ooh, I don't want to have to even be in that place. But that's not trust. Right. Because the, the way you get to know the capacity of your trust is when you need to really use it. And it's all, <laughs> you know, it's like, I trust, but everything is just laid out all perfect. I mean, I don't know. But it's mm -hmm. to really know how you trust and how much you trust in your own self. It's especially when things ain't going right. Mm -hmm. And we've got to learn to be creative, flexible. You know, I'm thinking of Christine today where she, she's literally on the side of the road. <laughs> she wants to be in this. And now I 
I could do something like that, but I may go through, oh my God, but this sounds going to be horrible. Maybe I shouldn't do it. Oh my God. But sometimes it's just, we got to let that go because mm-hmm. what Christine is, maybe, maybe somebody comes to hear exactly what Christine has to say. Mm-hmm. Like in that I moment. In it's, for a reason, so yeah. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. And Somebody can get caught up as like, what's all that noise behind Christine? Well, why would she be on the side of the road doing something like that? And somebody else is like, oh my God, I'm so glad she was on there today because I needed mm-hmm. to hear what she was saying. Mm-hmm. Life, will, life is always answering. Yep. And as, as much as we talk about the same things and our work is about the same things, each of us has a unique voice and our voices are needed. It's different if one of us yes. is here. So, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, okay. and apologies for my sound because I know no, it's not. No, don't do, don't do that. Don't do that. Nope. No, no, don't we're do it. Up. We have not accepted that apology. Okay. Not accepted because okay. you're right where you need Hello. to be. All right. Right? So, so it is, yeah, evidently, because my GPS has rerouted me about five times today. <laughs> well, that means where you are is where you're supposed to be. That's right. 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 So grateful to be with y'all, my friends. Mm -hmm. I mean, just grateful. Y'all were with me all weekend on this retreat. Um, and I just, yeah, it's I mean, one of the things I want to speak into this space right now in this moment is y'all part of being on the side of the road is I am living the life that I created. I mean, I get to go beautiful places and speak and play and provide opportunities for other people and and i get to do it in beautiful places and yeah i mean it is it is part of my work and i'm grateful you left so, you said you left something out that we often say getting paid to play that is true I, I almost said it and I stopped myself. So thank you for I got you. that. I do. I do. I get paid to play and I get paid yes. to play in beautiful places. I mean, yes. a week ago I was in Palm Springs this last weekend. I was in Asheville, North Carolina. And I was telling Cecile before we got on, my GPS got wonky today. And I ended up in a place I had never been before. And what magic is that? Like Mm -hmm. that I ended up in this beautiful, stunning place. And it was just, it was divine. I wasn't supposed to be there. I was already supposed to be home so I could be jumping on this call with y'all. And I will send you a picture at a, like, I, I the picture you sent was stunning. Really? Stunning. Mm -hmm. And it was like, how did I end up on top of this mountain? Wasn't supposed to be there, totally off track. No GPS. I mean, no, no signal. Like, like, oh, what? Yeah. yeah. And just trusting in that timing yeah. that, that, all right, here we go. Here we go. Yes. The ability to trust is an investment in your well being. <laughs> yeah. It seems like a hard thing, but it's an investment in your well being. When we learn to trust, we can surrender less stress. We can, mm-hmm. we can breathe. We can stop. We can say, I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know what to do. I need help. Everything that they tell us not to say or they people frown upon, I don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. But just because I don't know what to do right now doesn't mean I can't find it. Mm-hmm. Trusting is an investment in your well being. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's take another breath. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sit up straight, head over your shoulders, shoulders over your hips. Find where you have any tension in your body and let it go. Relax those muscles. And then take in a deep belly breath. Feel your belly expand. And then exhale at your own pace. When you're ready, let's take in one more deep breath. And this time, as you exhale, notice how you feel in your body. Allow yourself to just settle into your body and feel grounded. And then when you're ready, you can open your eyes. 
So I want to ask you guys a day, what are you talking about tomorrow on your Being You podcast? Boy, I, it's funny that flashed in my head and I'm like, do I want to talk about podcasts? It's funny. <laughs> then, yeah, so <laughs> right there. Well, tomorrow we're talking about the governmental trinity. We're talking about the spirituality of leadership, of politics, and mm. how we can make a difference, a powerful, impactful difference when we are integrating our spiritual nature in our leadership, in mm. government, and what we can do for those of us who are not in there. Mm -hmm. like, it's all connected. And uh, my uh, my friend, Deborah L. Johnson, Rev D, is joining, is joining me in. Ooh, that sister. She's the author of The Sacred Yes and Your Deepest Intent. Now, those books are written like, um, you know, like uh, Conversations with God. Mm -hmm. So she downloads and it's like spirit, God, the divine, speaking about things that could be done when it comes to how, particularly it was targeted towards America. The government mm -hmm. in America, the mm -hmm. foreign policy, and he speaks to it in such a powerful spiritual way that makes you go, that makes so much sense. So I'm excited. Okay. And that's tomorrow yeah. at 1 p.m. You can find him on YouTube. I'll be putting a link in the description. So y'all check him out tomorrow. That's 1 p.m. Eastern time, right? Yes. 1 p.m. Eastern. Okay. All right. And Christine, what are y'all talking about this week on Women Connected and Wisdom? That is a great question, Cecile. <laughs> we are, uh, here's what I can tell you. We are recording episode 66. We are starting a new season, season eight. We're going to have an incredible guest. And as always, we're going to be talking about one of the eight dimensions of wellness. But because I didn't have my regular meeting this morning, I'm not sure who the guest is or what the topic is. But you can check out my social media. And we'll have that up tonight or tomorrow. So, because I am trusting in divine timing and going with the flow. We're yeah, at sure. five o'clock Eastern time on Wednesdays. We go live. All right. And I will be putting a link to uh, the Women Connected and Wisdom podcast in the description for this too. And yeah. uh, it's funny you mentioned that you're talking. Oh, well, it's not funny because I know this is what you do. Talk about the eight dimensions of wellness. But my blog post on Wednesday is going to be an overview of the eight dimensions of wellness. And of course, I'll be giving you a shout out. All right. Um, so Thank you so much. I can't wait to read it. And for y'all, if you haven't checked out Cecile's blog yet, masterful writer. You are just uh -huh. incredible. And um, I recommend them to a lot of people and I share them. Sorry, big truck oh, going by. <laughs> that was just affirmation. Big, powerful <laughs> blog. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. All right. Do y'all have anything you want to say before you go? Before we go. Well, what I would say is I would invite people to go to letsreimagine.org. I got another session representing your ancestors mm -hmm. coming up May 26th. I did one this past Thursday. It was awesome. And I'm doing another one. Let's grow together. Let's connect. Let's tap into this ancient wisdom and create a world that we want to live in together. Uh -huh. As a matter of fact, I think Christine and I have one. Is it tomorrow? Uh, with oh. Let's Reimagine too. It's about um, letting go of blame, shame, and guilt and processing grief in a group, processing grief as a collective instead of just mm. by yourself. Oof. Yeah. So, what time um, is that? Uh, what time is that? Is that at 7 o'clock? <laughs> I think it's good, at 7 o'clock. Good question. I believe. I will put, I'll link put the, the link. No. <laughs> but you know what? This is a good opportunity when we talk about trust in the process. This is a good opportunity to say if mm -hmm. there is a fully, if there's an embodied, heart centered VA out there that's willing mm -hmm. to work with a team, we're mm -hmm. here. Yep. <laughs> so that that's way we could, they could have the flame flashed up for us. What are you talking about tomorrow? They'll be behind the scenes and flash it up. We're like, yes. <laughs> that's right. Okay. Well, for everybody who's watching this live and everybody who's watching us on the replay, thank you for joining us. Check out the description. I will be putting the links in the description. Um, if you're watching on LinkedIn and Facebook, please like us and follow. If you are watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe and then click the little bell so you get notifications when we um, go live again. And remember to breathe from your belly and we are sending you fierce love. And share, 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 share. Share, yes, share, share.
Grateful. Right. Peace and blessings. Yes, indeed. <laughs>